Good morning. It is 10 o'clock and we are here to do a video about Prep Your Tech. Um, basically, we just want to let you know everything that you need to know about technology here on campus before you arrive. Um, my name is Molly Strickland. I'm a student here at the University of Arkansas. I'm studying Advertising and Public Relations with a minor in Marketing. I'm about to head to my junior year. Good morning, Molly. Good morning. Now, who's this? <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Marcelo Navajas and I'm a senior Resnet tech working for the University of Arkansas at the Housing Department. I'm a senior in Electrical Engineering and I've been working for the Housing Department for three years now. So today I would like to share a couple tips with you guys on how to prep your tech. Excellent, excellent. We have a laptop here so we can, mm -hmm. a stunt laptop if you will, to mm -hmm. go over and show the different things that we need to show. Um, now you said you're a Resnet tech, what, what kind of is that? Sure. So uh, this is our website. Uh, ResNet stands for Residential Network. And we basically uh, are what students will be using on campus to access the internet. Uh, ResNet is a collaborative uh, partnership between the University Housing Department and the Information Technology Services Department to provide a local network and internet services to our residents living on campus. Very cool. Um, so we do have some people watching. Let me tell them, if you're viewing at home, feel free to ask us questions as we go. Uh, and we're pleased to hear where, where you're from even. Just tell us where you're from and tuning in from. So that'd be great. Um, I guess, you know, ResNet is really about connecting online, getting on the internet. Yeah, basically. And um, you connected to the internet when you were living in your residence Yes, I did. Right? The main um, internet for Arkansas, it's called UARC Wi-Fi, not guest Wi-Fi. That's a good thing to yeah. know the moment One you arrive on campus. One thing to know when you arrive on sure. campus, use UARC Wi-Fi. And it's just, your username is going to be your UARC name. So mine's MS Strick. Mm -hmm. And then your password is just going to be your password for all of Arkansas. Thanks. Very nice. Hey, Cindy from Austin. We'll wave hello to Sydney. Hi, Cindy. Hi, <laughs> Cindy. Um, okay. So, uh, yeah, how easy is it to connect? Either one can answer Sure. That. Uh, let me tell you how to connect. So... Uh, there's two main ways that you can connect to our network. Um, so for the most part, uh, laptops, desktop computers, mobile devices such as phones and tablets do not require any special arrangements to connect to our network. Uh, you can connect in two different ways. Uh, in some of the dorms, we do have internet uh, jacks on the walls. Uh, I'm going to show you one on this room uh, later on. But if you do have a jack on your wall, you can connect to your device by plugging one end of the Ethernet cord to your wall and the other end to your device. So you have an Ethernet connection sometimes. Yeah, in some uh, dormitories we do. And we have Wi-Fi in, in all of them. Um, just know that we do not provide Ethernet cords anymore. So if you want to use one of them, um, you will have to buy one probably at the Walmart or on campus. Um, and the other way you can connect is using the Wi-Fi. And it's fairly simple. All you need to do is... Uh, you want to go to the list of available networks on your computer, okay, and then coming tight on that. All right, right and okay. then you're gonna want to uh, find uh, your Wi-Fi, mm -hmm. and then once you click on it, it'll uh, the first time you do it, it's gonna ask for your username and password, mm -hmm. and once you type those in, you'll be ready to go. Yeah, so you have a login screen that pops up, exactly, and just type in your. Uh, your, uh, what is it called, username? Mm -hmm. Yeah, your UARC ID. UARC uh, ID. No, your UARC, UARC username. Your UARC password. username, which yeah. is everything that comes before the at sign on your mm -hmm. email. Exactly. And then your unique password, which uh, will get you into almost everything when it comes to the University of Arkansas's yeah. uh, technological stuff. Hey, Allison from Phoenix. From Phoenix? Wow. Oh, okay. that's a long way. <laughs> yeah, glad to have you tuned in. Um, okay, so you connect in that way both with your laptop and I guess your phone would be mm -hmm. a similar kind of... Yeah, so on your phone, you would just go over here to mm -hmm. your settings, you go to Wi-Fi, and then it'll search, and then you do UARC Wi-Fi. Yep. Mine should be connected, but... And yeah. the first time you'll have to log in again. First time you'll have to log in again. Sometimes, after not being here for a while, you may have to log back in. And mm -hmm. whenever you change your passcode on campus, because you have to change, I think, every 90 days... 120, or... I think. Oh, and I think it's 120, and I'm actually really wow. glad you mentioned that because we have a lot of students calling in saying, oh, my internet stopped working, and what they uh, don't realize is that they changed their password, and so they need to go back into the password thing on the Wi-Fi and change that in there so that they can connect again. Mm -hmm. Which I believe is password.uart.edu mm -hmm. yeah, to change, you can your, change your, password. your password there anytime. We try to have uh, pretty intuitive uh, uh, URLs when we can. Okay, so great. So we've talked about how to connect with so, your phone. So hold on, yeah. uh, I'm going to stop you Please, right there. Because we have some other devices. We have uh, 
So if you're trying to connect with, let's say, an Apple TV or a Roku or any other smart TV or gaming console, such yeah. as like an Xbox or a PS3. I want to do that. Then you're going to have to access our website and register your device mm -hmm. so that you can go through the firewall. And I can show you right now how to register your device. How do we get through that website. firewall? Show me how. Okay. So uh, our website is housing.uark.edu. Mm -hmm. And uh, let me go back there so you'll see what you will see when you first go okay. in there. Um, there we go. So the first thing you're going to want to do is uh, go to ResNet under My Housing. Okay. And then you're going to see this screen right here. Mm -hmm. um, here we have a little bit of information uh, about what ResNet is. And here we have a list of the more common devices that we get on campus. And um, I'm going to go over that in a little bit. And so to register your device, you are going to want to go to adding a device to ResNet and hit register my stuff. Okay. And then it's gonna ask you to log in. Uh, so I'm gonna log in with my credentials right now. Okay, and this is how to register for any device, like a smart TV? Everything or... other than a laptop, a desktop computer, or a mobile device. Okay, okay, so... good enough. I think that was my password. <laughs> um, let's just you knew mine. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to, so the first time you log into the website, yeah. it's going to ask for some uh, contact information. Mm -hmm. And uh, the reason we do this is so that when we open, uh, if you ever open a problem ticket with us, mm -hmm. uh, we will have a phone number to contact you and we will be uh, able to reach you faster and help you fix your whatever problem you're having. Sure. So the landing page you'll see when you very first log in will yeah. give you additional support. Hmm. Um, let's try, okay. I think it's not working for you right now because you're not living on campus. Yeah, no. yeah. And this... <laughs> but um, the first time you log crap. in, you'll actually have a different a different experience than Molly, who's lived here for how many years? One. <laughs> I lived here for one year. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm you've from, been on campus. I mean, like, not living on campus. Yeah. You've been here at the university. Yeah, so. I'm about to start my junior year. Yeah. So. Okay, there we go. So okay. uh, once you log into the website, uh, you're going to see this uh, window. Mm -hmm. And so uh, for the sake of the video, let's say you're trying to register your Xbox One. Okay. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to uh, go look where your device is. So it would be under yeah. gaming consoles right mm -hmm. here. And then you're going to go find uh, Xbox One. Mm -hmm. And then it'll ask you to name your device. So let's just say my Xbox or whatever. Okay. And then we have uh, two different types of connections available, the Ethernet connection and the wireless connection. Okay. In my experience, uh, students are trying a game, usually try to use the Ethernet connection, mm -hmm. but uh, we've upgraded the wireless connection as well, so it's very stable right now, so either one will work for you. So let's say you're trying to use the wireless and you wanna uh, register your device so you can uh, game online through the wireless network. So it's going to ask you for a wireless MAC address and so, What's that? What's a wireless MAC address? So, um, a wireless MAC address is a series of 16 uh, numbers and letters. Okay. Um, it's a hexadecimal code, but I'm not going to get into that. I'm going to simplify that for you. And it's basically an ID for your device. And mm -hmm. what it does, it's, it lets our network know what kind of device is trying to connect and basically who is trying to connect to the network. Where gotcha. do you find that at? Uh, sure, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you that in a little bit, but uh, one thing I want to clarify is that a MAC address is something that every single device that connects to the internet has, mm -hmm. and not something that is only for Apple devices, like many people uh, seem to believe. Mm -hmm. um, so to find your MAC address, um, you can always... I had a question come in uh -huh. while we were talking. Alex asks, I was wondering if a Philips Hue wireless lighting system, which I assume is kind of a smart device, uh -huh would be compatible with ResNet? It is, actually. We've had a couple of them uh, uh, been registered last semester. Uh, you may have a couple issues when trying to uh, register the device, but if you give us a call, uh, we will be happy to help you. Okay. Uh, so our contact information is, uh, our phone number is 479, uh, four, no, 839 and our email is resnet at uark.edu. Okay. So yeah, Alex, you, you apparently the Philips Hue wireless lighting system will work. Mm -hmm. All right, great. So you're going to show us MAC addresses. Okay, so for the most part, uh, you can find the MAC address for any device 
on Google. Mm -hmm. So I usually tell students uh, just go on Google and type how to find my Mac, my Mac address and then your device name. But we also have a helpful list of devices on this website. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's say I was trying to register my Xbox One. So I'm gonna go looking for Xbox One on this list and I'm gonna click on there and I'm gonna scroll down and we have a video right here that will tell you how to find your Mac address. And we're not gonna play this right now, but you can play it at home and it's fairly simple to follow. And once you get that series of numbers and letters, you're going to write them down right here and mm -hmm. then just hit add new device and you'll be ready to go. Bam, you're in, okay. You'll be able to see all, your, all the devices that you've registered under my devices right here. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that, that should be it. If you have any troubles, just let us know and we'll be happy to help you either through the phone or we can also schedule an appointment with you. Yeah, y'all do house calls, right? Yeah, we do uh, house calls. Uh, we, are, we have extended hours during the first couple weeks of school so mm -hmm. that uh, we can help as many students as we can. Uh, our regular office hours are Mondays through Fridays from 9 to 6, but like I said, during the first couple weeks, we will have people staying uh, later, and we'll also have people working on Saturdays and Sundays. Very cool, very cool. Um, so, what else would we like to show about ResNet, or even the expanded services that we uh, offer here? Sure, uh, so another good thing, uh, if you're a student at the University of Arkansas, is the free software that you can access. So. Um, you can see some of the software that we have available if you go to techarticles.uark.edu mm -hmm. you and then you're gonna see this website right here mm -hmm. and you're gonna want to go to services and if you scroll down uh, you're gonna see these two tabs right here mm -hmm. the antivirus and the software uh, let me go over the antivirus first because I think it's actually one of the most important tools you can get before coming to campus and the reason for that Big is... Big fan of antivirus software, huh? Yeah. Okay. Well, and especially of this uh, brand of antivirus, mm -hmm. Symantec. And the reason for that is that um, with so many uh, antivirus software out there, uh, we usually run into a couple of them that will either slow down your connection to the university's network or won't let you connect at all. Mm -hmm. And that's why we worked uh, with the people at Symantec to uh, bring you this software that works perfectly with our network. So. Um, you just hit on the antivirus tab and then if you just hit download and install it'll ask for your credentials and you can download the antivirus for free very nice service there yeah and then I've heard office 365 is that yeah exactly that's another really nice tool to have if you're a student um, if you hit here on software, uh -huh. software um, yeah. it'll bring you to this website and you can download two things in here uh, the one that you mentioned is a uh, Microsoft Office 365, and mm -hmm. that will give you access to Word, PowerPoint, Excel, OneNote, Outlook, and many other uh, Microsoft products. Uh, once you're trying to install it, of course, it's gonna ask for your credentials, and it will ask you which products you want to download, so you don't need to download all of them. You can get only the ones that you need. And it'll also grant you some space on the OneDrive cloud, so that way you can like save your notes and your papers on the cloud, and you don't have to worry about your computer dying or right because they can access them anywhere in the cloud. Yeah, and we also have uh, Adobe Creative Cloud, mm -hmm. which will grant you access to other uh, applications, like Illustrator, Illustrator, InDesign, the stuff we use all the time just for professional purposes. Yeah, exactly. And Premiere, right? Yeah, you can exactly. Do videos. We actually make all of our videos with Premiere, so. Uh, that can come very handy to mm -hmm. students. And that's sixty dollars, I think, a year for students. Normally, two hundred and fifty dollars a year, so it's quite a yeah, discount that you a great get deal. for it. Yeah. And um, yeah, that's. Uh, there's also some other free software that's available, mm -hmm. but that's uh, dependent on what college uh, you're studying on. So, for example, for me, being in the College of Engineering, we had access to all this power analysis mm -hmm. software, and so. There's much more software than this, but uh, you will that learn might about be this. College specific. Exactly. Yeah. I know one of the things I really use is Linda, mm -hmm. um, which is a free, or it's not free that university pays for, but it's free for students. Right. It's a and it's basically like a tool that you can use if you're wanting to learn any type of program. Um, it gives you YouTube tutorials basically on how to work everything. So eventually you become a pro. Yeah, it's. So. I've used it a lot too professionally, and it's. Uh, basically like having access to an online university yeah. when it comes to learning specific types of software. Yeah. 
Um, Definitely. So highly recommended. It. And I think the way you access that is going to uh, ITS or Linda. I usually. I usually just like. I that. usually just use the term UARC and then what I'm looking for. And I think you do that too. I do that yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hold on. Um, so then it just popped up and then it says online training for everyone anywhere. And it tells you how to learn Office 365, the basics, how to use Linda, um, faculty, um, yeah. All kinds of things. So all kinds of things, and you can just log in. This is always the main screen when you mm -hmm. go in to log into something. So it's going to be rework username and passcode. And I log in, and then it shows me things. Like, I learned how to do Adobe Spark. Yeah. Um, so you yeah. can create playlists with it and everything like that. So. Yeah, and I think once you finish a section or a class, uh, it'll actually give you a certification that you know how mm -hmm. to use the software or whatever it is you're learning. Just you put that on your resume and it's not exactly. a bad thing to have. Um, another service, as long as we're talking about technological services, is the Student Technology Center in the Union. Exactly. And, uh, they have a lot of equipment available for, uh, you can take it home. Uh, they have gaming consoles, they have GoPros, they have computers. They have mouses, controllers, pretty much anything you can think of. And uh, they'll rent them out for to you for a couple days. Uh, yeah, you should definitely check that out on the union. That's very helpful. Yeah, you can, I mean, you can rent the hardware, the tech hardware. and uh, Not rent it, I mean borrow. I mean, it didn't cost yeah. anything. Yeah, exactly. It's free to, to take out as a student. Well, uh, let's talk about laundry. Sure. So... Uh, we worked with a laundry company uh, last year to uh, integrate the laundry room into our Wi-Fi network. And the reason for that is that we had a lot of people that were struggling with the laundry room. They had to wait a long time to find a machine that was available. And we usually had people that didn't know where the, when their load was finished, so they would forget about it and have other people just waiting on a an, uh, machine to be available. I see you so, nodding over here. You're yeah. nodding. You said a lot. I mean, it's easy because, so, well, I lived in Yoakum, and it has about 500 people in there, and there's not that many. I mean, there's, let's say, I don't know the number off the top of my head, 10 washers, 10 dryers. So it gets kind of, it makes you kind of mad whenever you go down there, and everything's filled, and then people are waiting, and you don't know how long it's going to take to do your laundry, and you may have to go back upstairs and do homework. You may have to, like, go to church. Like, Sundays are the most popular day to do your laundry. And so the system that I actually downloaded the app on my phone because I found it easier, it told me what was available, um, told me how much time was left on it, and so I could go down there immediately, put my stuff in, and then it would tell me when my stuff was done and when I could move it over. Yeah. So yeah. something very good to use. Yeah, so let me show you how it works. So uh, let's go back so that you can see how it's going to look the first time you log in. So you will go to laundryalert.com. Mm -hmm. And once you go to the website, it's going to ask for a password to sign in. Uh, the password for the University of Arkansas is Razorbacks. And so you type Razorbacks right here. And hit sign in. Mm -hmm. And then you'll get a list of all the buildings on campus. So right now, we are filming at Futural Hall. Mm -hmm. So let's say I want to do my laundry. So I'm going to go to Futural. I'm going to click on it. And it's going to tell me all the machines that are in that room. Uh, the status of the machine is right next to it. So we can see that all the washing machines are available and that there's two drying machines in use. Mm -hmm. It'll also tell you uh, what's the estimated time remaining on the machine. So this one will be drying for the next 16 minutes. And another really cool thing about this uh, website is that you can go here to let me know. And you can have the website email you when either a machine has become available or when your load is finished. So let's say I'm using by the washing machine number three. So I just say, let me know when machine three is done. And mm -hmm. then you just type your email down here and hit submit. Mm -hmm. And then once uh, your load uh, has been finished washing, it'll send you an email and you'll know that it's ready. Very nice, yeah, yeah. Saving, saving time. Yep. Without a doubt. And uh, you've got it on your phone as yeah, well. Yeah, so I have the app right here on my phone, mm -hmm. and I just click on that, and I wait for it to load, of course. And if you don't know what to do, there is a sign in the laundry room that lets you know how to do all of this. So I'm connected to Futural, and I click that, and it's telling me that these are all the things that are available, and there's 15 minutes now remaining on the washer 8 and 10. 
um, and you can track it whenever you want and it'll just send you a notification whenever you're done saying that hey it's open you can go down there um, and like I'm tracking that one now seeing when it's gonna be available yeah and another nice thing about it is that uh, either on the website or on the app if you see that one of the machines is not working you can actually report a problem and they'll have somebody come and fix it so on the website you just hit request service and then you hit let's say machine 5 is not working and then you just type something if the machine stopped working I don't know something you hit submit and then they'll have somebody come over to school and fix the machine as soon as they can. Very nice, yeah. We try to um, service those machines. We have a special contract with a vendor and uh, we service those laundry machines as much as we can. Keep them going for you. Mm -hmm. um, have you, let's see, did you use your laundry alert a little bit last year? I did. You did. Just because there were so many people mm -hmm. in the residence hall and so it gets very annoying whenever you have to go down there several times and you know, sometimes you still have to wait just as long as you're down there right before it ends um yeah it was just something good to use so sure you highly can. suggest it it comes with your tuition and fees so why That's would you well. not with your housing it? fees yeah. specifically your housing, your housing fees. fees yeah all right well cool deal um let's see what else do we need to talk about when it comes to technology here on campus so yeah. another thing uh, i wanted to show you guys Please. is how the cable boxes work mm -hmm. on the school so uh we've uh, partnered with Cox last year to bring HDTV to all the rooms on campus. So we have cable boxes in all the rooms and uh, I can show you guys how that work if you follow me. Let's do that, yes, you bet. And if you have any questions, now is a great time to ask as well as we're going through here explaining the technology in your room and beyond. So the way this works is we have a cable box uh, in the room. It's usually behind your desk. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll be able to find that. Uh, the first thing you want to do when you move to campus is make sure it's plugged in mm -hmm. and it has an LED on the front. Uh, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it with the camera right yeah. now, but um, it's usually on the front end right here. And all you want to make sure is that the LED is green. So that means it's working. Green and means if, connected. Exactly. And if it's not green, then uh, there is a number on the box and you can call Cox and they'll ask for the ID number of the box, which is also written on the box. Okay. And they'll uh, help you out either through the phone or they can also send a tech to your room uh, to help you out. But for the most part, uh, all the cable boxes are working. And um, the way it works is you have an HDMI output that mm -hmm. will go to your TV. Dun dun dun. And There's then, a TV, stunt TV. And then we have also a coax output for those that have older TVs. Okay. And yeah. what else? Uh, this right here is the IR receiver. It stands for the infrared receiver, mm -hmm. and it's basically what is receiving the signal from your remote. So depending on how you configure your room, you might actually put that in a slightly different place? Yeah, exactly. Uh, we tend to change these every, uh, every, semester, every year, and that way uh, it's not stick to anything and you can actually put it on your TV or on your desk or wherever you want. So, mm -hmm. yeah. so the Cox remote, for example, won't, it's not keyed to your TV, it's keyed to that thing. Yeah, exactly. This is keyed to the cable box, but mm -hmm. uh, once you move in, you're gonna get uh, one of these uh, papers. And yeah. it has instructions on the back on how to program this Cox controller mm -hmm. for your TV. For your that specific TV. Exactly. So okay. that way you don't have to use two remotes. So you can actually turn on your TV with this or change the volume or do everything else you would do with your regular remote. Sure. And there's also instructions in the back of the remote to show you how to do that. Okay. Yep. Great. Great. Well, let's turn on the TV. And actually, we were, we were having a question about um, uh, channel selection. Yeah, so right here, um, if you go to housing.uark.edu forward slash channels, you'll get to cable. this cable. Mm -hmm. You'll get to this screen and it does tell you Cox Cable instructions um, about how to set up everything. And then it says the Cox remote uses a AAA battery. You are responsible for supplying this battery. Yes, bring that AAA mm -hmm. battery. Yes, and then right here, it gives you the channel listing and the troubleshoot guide. Also, if you ever needed any help, it gives you this number that is actually you know University of Arkansas number. So if you would call that, um, and they can help you with any questions that you may have. And you'll go over here, and you'll notice that right here, these are all the things that you're going to be getting mm -hmm. in your TV starter guide. So you have access to NBC, TBS, ABC. You can still watch The Bachelor. Um, <laughs> you have connection to the UATV, which is our 
um, channel here that we have on campus that will also give you local news about what's going on in the university. And you do have the HBOs. Okay. So that's always something cool. So you can have a late night movie night. Sure. Um, you can buy... Um, you can upgrade. Yeah, you can upgrade. Mm -hmm. and, get and get a DVR channels. if you want to. And get well. a DVR. Um, You'll buy that through Cox, not through us. Yeah, but. and it'll just tell you these are the extra things that you can get. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Well, let's see the TV in action. It's sure. now working. Um, Go so, to channel 341. Okay. Oh, we're there. We're there. So this is one of the HBO channels. Uh, they mm -hmm. usually have movies on that. I don't know. Let's guess uh, the movie. Let's watch the movie in real time here. Y'all can watch with us. What are we watching? No idea. Sure, but no, 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 don't, don't okay. got it. You gotta guess it. Is that a game? You gotta guess it. Okay. I don't think I've ever seen it. People at home, if you know which movie this is, that looks really scary. Is it? It's not Stranger Things. No. No. It reminded me of that actually. Yeah. It reminded me All of. All right. Well, let's not keep it in suspense. Part. Let's go ahead and figure out what it is. Mm, push the so, push the guy. So uh, if you hit the guide on the yeah. remote, like everyone will tell you, it's very remote. But yes. uh, yeah. Oh, that's why I didn't know what it was. Oh, Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. Can you uh, turn down the volume a little bit? Sure. Uh, okay. Let's do this. We haven't programmed this remote for that yet, but uh, we can actually do that right now if you want to see how to do that. Uh, sure, sure, why not? So, uh, the way it works is uh, you have instructions on the back, so mm -hmm. it says turn the TV on, press and hold the setup button until the power button blinks twice, and then release. So, let's do that. Right now we're setting up for a Samsung. And then it says, press and release the power button. And then press and hold the select button until the TV turns off, then release. Mm. There we go. Let's try this again. All right, we'll do one Setup. Then it has to blink twice, then power. And release, and then select, and then eventually it's going mm -hmm. through all the channels. And now, okay. you bam, it just did it. Off. Then you release the button, and then now it's programmed to your TV, so we can turn it on, and it'll work with your TV. So you don't need this other remote anymore. You can save it. Nice. Yep. Oh, and you didn't have to type in a little code either. It just sort of cycled. No, exactly. What it's doing, it's uh, it has the all the codes loaded on the on the remote, so it's just going through all of them, and then. When it finally um, finds the one that matches your TV, your TV turns off, and then it's programmed. So. That's super convenient. Wow, okay. That's such a weird movie. Um, Alex says, so we can't use a Ethernet hub correct. And I think it depends now on the room. Some rooms have an Ethernet mm -hmm. hub. Some do not. Um, would you say the majority do or don't at this point? We've uh, been transitioning as a campus to wireless. Exactly. We're transitioning from Ethernet to wireless. Uh, we're have a very stable wireless network uh, right now and we're actually improving uh, and adding more uh, routers to each room. Uh, you can see one right here and mm -hmm. those are the wireless uh, APs. Yes. As we we're not them. watching you, that is, that is Ethernet right there. Yeah, and uh, as long as they're blue or green, it means they're working and they're very stable. So you, if you don't have an Ethernet cord in your, an Ethernet jack in your room, then you always will have Wi-Fi. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's a change from like two or three years ago when we were still using Ethernet a lot. Now we feel like we're very confident in our wireless connections. Yeah, exactly. All right, so the TV works. Let's show them just two special interest channels yeah. for um, sure. University of Arkansas community. Yeah, so if we if you look on here, I'll tell you, but U of A, it's going to be 214. Uh -huh. I was getting my daily news in. Yeah? Is that Hoda? And, what is her name? I don't even know. Yeah. So this is UATV. Um, this is run by the journalism department. You can get involved with this if you want to. Mm -hmm. um, go to the journalism department down there in the basement of Kimple Hall, and they will show you how to get involved, and you can do that with the yearbook too. But basically, this is just like the news channel. Um, I have no idea what they're doing. But talking about something. They're talking about something. And we have an RA right there on the left, so cool. All right, so what other channel? Let's show... Okay. Let's show, so HBO, it's going to be 341, I believe, I think, mm -hmm. oh, 340. 340? Oh, 341, I was right. So that's what we were just okay, on. Okay, we were just on that. Um, so. so you have HBO, it's Miss Peculiar's Children's Place. Camp Nowhere. Camp Nowhere. 
giving some really poopy scores. <laughs> um, but Showtime, there's no Showtime. Okay. And then, like, you can go to... My favorite channel is NBC. All right. So I got a channel line. Let's do every channel. Today show. Let's go yeah. through every single. No, I'm joking. I'm teasing. That's I not mean, good. I can't. Oh, the price is right. That's a good show. We'll leave it on this. One. Okay, we'll leave it on the show while we are signing off here. Does anybody have any other questions for us about um, technology on campus? We want you to be comfortable to be able to connect online as much as you need to. Find the channels that you want to be able to watch. Mm -hmm. And get all those free services that, you know, we were talking earlier. Um, you didn't know about Linda till a little bit later. I had no idea what Linda was until I started my internship with the housing department. So it's just services like that that I wish I knew um, before I arrived here on campus that I could use and utilize. Because I, I like to say that I know everything, but I really don't. So that would have been a good tool to use. And the laundry alert system I didn't know really about until halfway over freshman year, so oh, wow. something I would definitely very highly consider. Yeah, using, and then we mentioned about the Student Technology Center being able to rent things, you said. Yeah, exactly, that's something I didn't really know until like a couple semesters ago, and I never really took advantage of that, so I'm really glad that we're showing this to students right now so that they have all this knowledge before they move to campus. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of resources that even I, and I've lived here a couple of years, <laughs> I don't even know about. So anyway, um, yeah. Feel free with any more questions. Jennifer asks, do you recommend getting a surge protector for your room? What do you mean by a surge protector? Is it a, I'm talking about the, the plug that has the protection okay, that comes uh, through. So I would actually very much recommend that. Uh, we have one right here in the back and mm -hmm. uh, I can tell you uh, as an electrical engineer, you definitely want this in your room. Oh, we get an electrical engineer it, opinion here. <laughs> <laughs> what, what it does is if there's like a lightning storm or something, that could damage like your TV or your microwave or any other electric device that you have. This thing actually has a little fuse in there. So what it would do is this thing would break instead of your TV and this is like $34. So it's $34. TV, so. Exactly, that's a lot of money. We, um, so high recommendation there about yeah. uh, getting a surge protector with the fuse that will break instead of your computer. Um, additionally, we do recommend that, you know, renter's insurance is something worth considering. Uh, you might talk to your parents about whether you're covered under their renter's insurance or you might consider, you know, getting renter's insurance yourself. It never hurts and it's honestly not that expensive, but it protects all of your stuff. Um, great. Well, let's see. We'll hang out for another second or two, see if any more questions come in with regards to, um, to technology. Yes. What are, I'll ask you a question. So you work the very first week and two of move in and people come in yeah. and they have a ton of questions for resident. Where do, what are like what are the majority of questions about? So the first couple of questions that we always get is uh, well my TV is not working and that's because students don't really know that they have to register their devices. This is for smart TVs. For right. smart TVs and gaming consoles, everything but computers and mobile devices. Mm -hmm. You have to register them like I showed you guys before. And another question that we get a lot is uh, what is the Wi-Fi password and like we said earlier, it's just your username and then your the password that you selected. Those are the two biggest questions you guys get. Yeah. Okay, well good. Well hopefully uh, people watching this are gonna be in the know. They're gonna be on the inside track when it comes to things they need to know. All right. Yeah, one last thing mm -hmm. is like we have flyers everywhere on campus with our contact information. So if you guys have any questions about any specific device or if you cannot uh, connect to the internet for any reason, uh, you should have no problem finding our contact information. They're literally everywhere on every dorm. So just feel free to contact us and we'll be happy to help you. Thank you very much. Thanks for tuning in with us to show us this stuff. No, it's been Very helpful. Yeah. We still have another one to do. Well, yes, we have the move in 27 or 17. Yeah, mm -hmm. that is going to be next Friday. So make sure that you tune into that. It's at 10 a.m. And we're just going to be going over everything that you need to know when moving in. So we're gonna tell you about parking, about dollies, about rubber mallets, all of that fun <laughs> stuff. All that so, exciting stuff. All the fun stuff, but definitely the most, one of the most useful videos. So tune in and it will be our last UARC home live video. So we'll and see. Then you'll, and then you'll be coming. And then you'll and be then here. And then y'all will be here. It's not that long. It's probably about three weeks away. Sorority recruitment, y'all got like two weeks, so. It's coming. Welcome right. to freshman year and welcome transfer students.
We'll see y'all later.